weaving through these images are roads. And you know, a road is an interesting thing to think about because it, it, it brings you from one point to another. It's, um, it's a bridge to a large degree from one world to the other. Um, and these roads are various textures which symbolize both things that I've explored, you know, that I've experienced, but also different time. So that very obviously a road like this could only happen, could only have begun to have happened in the 20th century because it's paved, because it has a yellow line on it. A road like this is paved and it could have been up to perhaps the time of the Romans. A dirt road, on the other hand, is very different. So you have various roads that come in that sort of weave through each other, and what they act as is they act as a kind of a, as a, kind of a bungee cord that ties those orbs together and that allows the eye to travel from one point to the other. Uh, along those roads are little instances of things that were important to me, like this is my cousin on his bicycle. This is a friend of mine named Robert Baruti who used to make eggs out of plaster, and he's carrying one of the eggs around with this little thing he made. Up here is my mother, my aunt, and a friend, a friend of theirs named Afra, who's still alive, on their bicycle. And that little instance, the reason why I put it up there is because when I was a kid, they used to tell me this story, which I felt was very interesting. They used to go and uh, take a train with their bicycle, these three women, up to the Alps. And uh, they, would, they, would, they would get out, get aboard their bicycle, they would have salami sandwiches <laughs> and, uh, and a bottle of wine. And they would get on their bicycle, and from there all the way into Parma was downhill. So they didn't have to pedal. <laughs> so they would just get on their bicycle and just use the brakes every once in a while and eat their stuff and, you know, and go three hours on their bike until they hit the city again. And I, and I always thought that was like an ideal thing to do and it was very interesting. So there they are. That's just to pay homage to the stupid little thing. And, you know, other things in here, like this is the first car I had when I was a little kid and, you know, it was, it was a little three-wheel car. My father's all, all, automobile. Uh, here's a little sheep herder with a sheep walking around, et cetera, et cetera. These things are things that would probably bore the hell out of you. Except for one thing, maybe, along this road, which I thought was kind of interesting, which is right here, coming in from this corner. Incidentally, the corners are very important in all of these paintings. The corners are very much addressed, because the corner in a piece of art is where um, one straight line of the pictorial surface meets another straight line of the pictorial surface. And to a certain degree, there's a, a tension involved. And the tension is because that point makes a kind of an arrow shape. And that arrow shape tends to want to point out of the pictorial surface. So I like to address those, and I like to sort of just say hi to them and say, hey, man, I understand you're there. I'm going to use you, OK? So for instance, there's a road that begins in this corner. There's a road that begins in this corner. There's one of the pod things there, uh, you know, et cetera, et cetera. This is also a very strategic situation visually. So at the bottom right, which is the opposite from the entrance of the painting, is a dirt road, which is, you know, timeless, as opposed to a 20th century one, where you see oxen, and there's actually 12, if you figure, oxen carrying a block of marble with a driver on a horseback and a dog. And uh, I like to fantasize that that was the chunk of marble that uh, Michelangelo used that was brought from Carrara to Florence during the Renaissance that he subsequently used to make the David. And I always thought it was very interesting how, you know, we, we look at sculpture right now just like we look at drawing. We see drawing, let's say, in, you know, on one of Leonardo da Vinci's notebooks, and we see paper. We say, oh, wow, that's a nice piece of paper. It's a nice drawing. I wonder why he put so many different lines and so many different little drawings within the same piece of paper. Well, the reason for that was because paper was extremely expensive, and it was a real pain in the butt to make. You couldn't just go to a store and buy, you know, to an art store. You couldn't go to Dick Blick and buy a piece of paper. So paper was a commodity that was very rare, and it was expensive. And so they tried to use it, you know, with, 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 with the most possible uh, amount of drawings within the same piece, just to, literally to save it, as opposed to just buying a pad and you know, doing one drawing, throwing it away, doing another drawing, throwing it away. Sculpture was obviously the same thing. If you think in terms of going to a marble quarry like in Carrara, which is way up in the mountains, 
and taking out a chunk of marble without power tools, just like when they built the pyramids, the technology wasn't very much different during the Renaissance. And you had to somehow, and you didn't have the Nile River to be able to float one thing to the, you know, from one point of Egypt to the other. You know, from Aswan, where they carved, you know, where they took that marble and just, you know, plop it on a, on a barge and take it up the Nile. Uh, so there they had to put it on a carriage. They had to be strong enough to carry an incredible, immense stone that was relatively delicate by virtue of its size, that was already squared out, and then by road carrying it to Florence or to Milan or to Rome or wherever the hell they carried it to. And then they had to get it down and they had to move it around without power tools, etc. So logistically, it was a major, major, major event and it was a, a very difficult thing to do. We lose sense of that today. But it's interesting to put those things in context. Uh, so there is that. And then another thing that's going on, and, you know, and as you explore this, you'll see a lot of different kinds of, oh, there's two people that just got married here. A bride, they're walking. I forgot why I did that. Uh, they're walking along this road for mysterious reasons. Uh, and there's a Humvee here. That's one of the local ladies that buy the Humvee to go shopping. Um, then behind the whole thing, there's another thing that sort of weaves it together, which is the idea of taking a pictorial surface, the flatness of the pictorial surface, and then going like this to it, and having the pictorial surface begin to move around within the flatness of the pictorial surface. In this case, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a piece of paper that kind of ribbons around. You see that? Now, this piece of paper that ribbons around is precisely the same piece of paper that, that, that is this. So if you take this and carry it over here, it is the same basic shape, which is an S. Uh, inside of this paper, what I did is, in order to show uh, the, uh, the, uh, the spatial warpage of the, of, the, of the surface of the paper, whatever I drew on it, I drew it in a way that it would actually look, perspectively speaking, given you saw a piece of paper that did that against the pictorial surface. And the images that I chose to put in here were uh, drawings and uh, ideas, uh, scientific, some visually philosophical, some mathematical, some artistic, some geometric, uh, and I'll explain it to you, that gave me various ideas to do this painting. So basically what I did there is I paid homage to uh, the points where I got these ideas from. So, uh, as an example, there's uh, one of the Vitruvian men that uh, Leonardo painted, because he actually did three of them, up, up above. Uh, there, this is an analysis of uh, two figures holding on to each other, done by Kandinsky. Uh, there are some um, uh, ideas that Plato came up with about the, about the, the atoms. Uh, there are, um, this is, a, this is a, um, an image Actually, both of these are images that uh, you find against the walls of the baptistry that Michael was talking about before I was baptized, things that highly influenced me uh, in life, and they, they dealt with um, the mythology of uh, animism, meaning that you know if you, you can put your soul into an object or into an animal and uh, use that to create a god or to create a force of nature. Um, so, 